a world where silence wasn't just peaceful, it was inescapable. You stepped outside the city limits and suddenly the digital lifeline we take for granted vanished. No bars, no signal, just isolation. A simple phone call, whether to loved ones, emergency responders, or your business, became impossible. We've all been there. That moment your phone displays no service. It's unsettling. Vulnerability sets in, and for decades we just accepted it. We assumed this was the natural limit of technology, a hard stop. But what if it wasn't? What if that entire concept, no signal, wasn't a technical boundary, but just a temporary phase? What if we're about to leave dead zones in the past, like floppy disks and dial-up internet? Let's talk about what's really happening. Most people are focused on 5G or the future of 6G, but what's unfolding now isn't just a faster signal. It's not an incremental upgrade. It's a complete rewrite of how global communication works. The shift is already underway, and the scale is massive. Quietly and methodically, China has developed satellite-based communication technology that is not only functional, it's already operational and integrated into consumer devices. Specifically, Huawei has created smartphones that can make voice calls without needing a terrestrial signal. You heard that right. We're not talking about hypothetical use cases. This is real. These phones don't need to be near a cell tower. They can place calls directly through satellites. We're witnessing the convergence of multiple breakthrough technologies, advanced power amplification chips, new antenna designs, and a purpose-built satellite network. The result? A commercially available phone that can reach space. The phone is part of the equation. But just as important, if not more so, is the infrastructure orbiting the planet. This is the Tiantong Satellite System, a layered constellation of geostationary and low Earth orbit satellites designed to provide direct mobile connectivity. Traditional geostationary satellites sit far from Earth and can cover broad areas, but they often suffer from high latency. That's where LEO satellites come in. These are closer to Earth, move faster, and deliver lower latency and faster data throughput. They act like low-flying data relays, express trains in space. Thanks to this hybrid architecture, these phones can now make a real-time voice call from almost anywhere on Earth. The phone connects directly to a Tian Tong satellite, which then links to a ground station in China. From there, the call is routed like any regular phone call. The entire journey takes less than a second. Getting this to work on a regular smartphone required solving multiple engineering problems. The signal from a standard mobile phone is far too weak to reach a satellite orbiting hundreds or even thousands of kilometers above Earth. Huawei's solution was to develop high-efficiency power amplifier chips, essentially giving the phone the ability to shout loud enough. But shouting isn't enough. The phone also needs to aim. Satellites are moving targets, often traveling at thousands of kilometers per hour. The antennas in these smartphones are engineered to track those satellites in real time, maintaining a stable connection even as both the phone and the satellite are moving. That's a level of precision that was previously only possible in military-grade hardware. And now, it's in your pocket. And let's be clear, this isn't a gimmick, it's not just a rescue-only feature. These phones can place voice calls, send texts, and increasingly exchange data, all without ever connecting to a traditional cellular network. So what does that mean for the telecom industry? Will this kill cellular networks? Not overnight. Cellular infrastructure is deeply entrenched. It's still faster in high-density areas, and in many places it's cheaper for now. But this satellite-based technology opens the door to something entirely different. A communication system not constrained by towers, cables, or geography. Cell towers require land, permits, power lines, fiber optics. They make sense in cities, but in remote regions, on the ocean, in the mountains, they're expensive and inefficient. Satellites don't have that limitation. They cover vast areas of the planet without touching a single patch of soil. For rural areas, disaster zones, remote industries like mining, shipping, or aviation, this is more than useful. It's transformative. Imagine a farmer in the middle of nowhere, still connected, a climber at the top of a peak, placing a call a search-and-rescue team in the aftermath of a hurricane, communicating without waiting for towers to come back online. This isn't just convenience. This is resilience. This is survival.
Other players are moving fast in this space too. Starlink is building toward direct-to-device service. Amazon's Kuiper, OneWeb, AST Space Mobile, they're all pushing toward global satellite communication. But Huawei has now demonstrated something unique, full smartphone integration. No bulky hardware, no terminals, just a phone. And that puts pressure on every other player, on telecoms, on phone makers, on governments. It also raises deep strategic questions. Who owns space-based communication? Who regulates it? Who gets access? These are not just technical challenges. They're political, economic, and legal ones. There are still hurdles. While the latency is impressive, it's not quite at par with fiber or 5G. Satellite connectivity requires a clear line of sight to the sky, which means dense urban areas or thick forests can interfere. The cost, while expected to drop, may initially be higher than standard plans. An international regulation, it's complicated. Spectrum rides, encryption standards, cross better access, these will all need to be negotiated country by country. But here's the thing, all those challenges are solvable, and they are being solved fast. The implications are massive. If phones can connect to satellites directly, then the future of mobile networks looks very different. Mobile virtual network operators could lease satellite capacity instead of relying on terrestrial carriers. Global roaming could become standard. No more SIM swaps, no more international fees, just always on global connectivity. This also unlocks enormous value for ION. Think sensors in agricultural fields, tracking systems in logistics, smart infrastructure in remote regions, all operating independently of cell towers. And as satellite bandwidth increases, this won't just be voice or text. It'll be full-on data, messaging apps, video, streaming, cloud services, all from space. This is no longer about phones. It's about creating an always connected human presence on Earth, regardless of location. It's about extending the digital ecosystem to 100% of the globe, not just the parts with infrastructure. What this means, practically, is simple. The idea of being off the grid is coming to an end. For the average user, it means you'll never have to worry about being out of range again, going hiking, sailing, flying. It doesn't matter. Your phone goes with you. And it works. For businesses, it means untapped markets and new operational capabilities. For governments, it means better disaster response, emergency coordination, and national resilience. And for billions of people currently living in underserved areas, it means access. Access to education, information, communication, services. This is the real promise of global connectivity. Now, no breakthrough is without its hype. It's important to stay grounded. But this one, it's real, it's operational, and it's moving fast. We're not just upgrading networks. We're replacing the very foundation they were built on. We're moving from Earth-based to space-based infrastructure. And once you make that leap, everything changes. We are entering a new era where communication is no longer bound by borders, terrain, or even infrastructure. It's a shift as significant as the jump from landlines to mobile. The future is coming fast. And it's coming from above. So the only real question is, how long until your phone makes its next call? Through space.